people were at the talk yesterday? Okay, so a lot of you. Um, I already made the slides for this, so we're going to talk about who we are just in case you did miss it. Um, so, I'm Jill. <laughs> this one's Jill. I'm Kyla. Um, we work heavily on social media and our Instagram account, um, but we've used this to work outside as well. So four years ago, we took off on a road trip you know, that turned into this unintentional personal project that led to you know, be, us being here today creating content for all these different brands. So this is where we live and work. Um, that's our trailer. Uh, this is our Instagram following. So over this period of time, we've been able to amass 133,000 followers on our social profile. We've been able to work with a lot of tourism and travel boards. So we've covered countries like uh, Colombia, Nicaragua, Belize, Scotland, England, Italy, Dominica. And we've actually worked with a lot of state boards too, like Hawaii, Nevada, and New Orleans. So this is some of our travel work. Um, this has turned into jobs with tech companies. So we work for Google, Samsung, LG, um, and then apparel and automotive clients as well. So with that in mind, we're going to try to teach you some of the things we've learned. Um, we built this in a way that you know maybe we might be teaching you some things you might already know depending on your progress within using the app. Um, maybe you haven't started. So there's going to be kind of a bit of things here and there that um, will either surprise you or seem obvious. So we'll see. Uh, the points we want to cover today are, you know, why use social media, what it takes to build a following, the pitfalls and drawbacks of sharing your work with the public, monetizing your social media presence, and then planning for a sustainable future. So why use social media? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, before we even get into kind of the business side of it or um, ways that you can monetize your social media presence and really make money off of it, um, just on a personal level, as a photographer, it's uh, a great resource in three different ways. So it is all at once a travel resource, an inspiration pool, and a mobile portfolio. So for travel, for example, and this, you know, you don't need to sell everything that you own and move into a trailer like we did. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, we're, we all love to travel, and even if it's as simple as something, you know, just location scouting within your own city. Um, Instagram allows you to discover tons of places. So this is an example of a photo that a friend of ours put up. Um, I saw it and I was like, this is a beautiful place. I need to go here. This would suit my style so well. And then you can see here that he's hashtagged it with come see Turkey, which is the hashtag for the tourism board of Turkey. And on clicking on that, I can see all of these images of Turkey and kind of get an idea of you know, what it really looks like from people that live there and share images of their life there. And it gives you a really in-depth look into the place. Um, you don't have to go to Turkey to do that. You can use it right within your own city and just, you know, browse and find places that maybe you've never been to in your own city that you would love to shoot. The Statue of Liberty <laughs> off the beaten path. <laughs> um, so beyond using those hashtags, uh, there's also a geotag feature on the photo, and that will share all of the photos that were taken within a specific place. So you can scroll across the entire map of the world and look at photos from each little spot that you'd like to visit. And it gives you a great idea when you're planning shoots you know, or location scouting to kind of see different angles or, or what a place looks like at different times of the day. Um, it's a really helpful tool to just kind of plan ahead. And when we're traveling, we found that this has been a great way um, to, you know, to find new places to see by interacting with these other users. So we really like to ask questions and for recommendations, and we, we tend to find really cool new things to see and do. So you can see here, we just completed a job for the Visitors Bureau of Oahu, and we kind of wanted to make our own itinerary. So we asked our audience, you know, what are some good places to go, places to see, things to eat, and we found some really amazing things that we wouldn't have found in these printed travel guides. You know, people had these personal experiences and they were willing to share with them. Or you share also, with them. because of the, the nature of the app, you're able to, you know, kind of see if these reviews are trusted. You can check out these people's profiles and say, like, oh, this looks like someone who would have relevant interest to me. Um, I trust their opinion. So instead of just, you know, kind of reading a bunch of stuff by strangers, you have a bit of a connection with these people. <coughs> Um, as an inspiration source, all of these platforms, Tumblr, Flickr, Instagram, all of them, they're just filled, flooded with imagery. Um, the thing that I really like about Instagram now is they've added a feature where you can save um, 
images that you see into collections and you know save them within albums. Um, it doesn't alert the person that you've done this, so <laughs> if you're you know saving pictures, <laughs> they'll they won't know. <laughs> um, but uh, it's you know it's a great way to just kind of build your inspiration pool. So instead of seeing something in a book and trying to remember it, you have it you know right there in your pocket if you're kind of lacking inspiration or feeling stuck. Um, you know, and follow what you love. So we obviously follow a lot of other professional photographers, but we also plan we also follow our friends and families, pets, um, all sorts of different things. So it's really important that you you know you find inspiration from all these different places. You know. Inspi what inspires you in real life? It doesn't have to be people that are shooting the exact same thing as you. So I think it's important to you know have a range in the type of work you like to look at. Um, the great thing about social media is that in its very nature it is social. So instead of just seeing a photo that you love on the pages of a book and wondering to yourself, oh, I wonder how they achieve this effect or you know, what lens was this shot with? I, I wonder. You can just reach right out and ask. And almost every photographer on that app is going to be more than happy to share secrets with you. Um, we certainly are. We get questions about it all the time. And, you know, it's a great way to kind of connect with the photographer and the person behind the image. So um, as a portfolio, this is a point we're going to talk about quite a bit. Um, this is really the most important aspect yeah. of it. Um, this is a free way to share your work. It's easy to use, and it reaches a lot of people if you use it right. Um, it doesn't have to be as clean and polished as you know your printed portfolio. Um, it's a really great way to share your work in real time and receive instant feedback. So, um, yes, you can get <laughs> feedback right away, and that you know feedback is important. So maybe you don't have the biggest following, but there's someone within your following that you really trust their opinion. So when they do give you feedback on your image, whether it's constructive or not, mm -hmm. you know that's great. Yeah, a lot of times you'll be shooting and keeping work to yourself and wondering if it's any good, you know, or, you know, if there's things that you could be doing better. This is like a little mini portfolio review every time you share an image. Um, in the way it's really kind of, you know, democratized the world of photography, um, you don't have to go out and print these 11 by 14s and fly down to New York City and knock on agency doors to get your work seen. It's out there for the masses and everyone has an equal opportunity to share their work. It's not limited to, you know, the people that are most established in the field or the richest. You know, the thing too is like we also maintain a portfolio in a traditional way. We have a printed book. We we keep a website that is definitely, you know, curated in a certain way with collections and it's very specific, but Instagram is this like living breathing work of art that you feed into, and it shows a really great range of the work you're creating. So the great thing about it is it allows you to share things that you know maybe don't fit into the work that you shoot. Maybe you're a landscape photographer, but you've taken a couple portraits that you're really proud of, and they don't necessarily fit in one of the categories on your website. This is a great place to just take risks and kind of share things that are new to you. Um, you can also see your progress over the years. So this is. Our very first photos that we ever shared, you can see they're terrible. And <laughs> now hopefully you will agree that these ones are better. So um, <laughs> please agree. If you don't, then just these are our first ones and those other ones are brand new. Um, <laughs> but the thing that I love about that is you can also look at other photographers, maybe people that you hold in really high regard, and trace it back to their beginnings and see how far they've come. And that's you know really reassuring sometimes to see that everyone started somewhere and that you know, not everyone was creating <laughs> great content right from the beginning. Now, I think the reason most of you guys are here is you want to know how to build this following. So we're going to dig into that right now. Um, so there are 700 million active users on Instagram, which, you know, why are they not looking at your profile? So we're going to try to teach you some ways that we think is the most effective way to bring these people to looking at your work and, and engaging with your content and seeing what you're creating. And, and the points we want to cover are finding a unique point of view, using captions in a meaningful way, engaging with your community and collaborating, and using hashtags with intent. So the first one I think is most important, and that is finding your unique point of view. Um, chances are, if you're here today, maybe you already know what you like to shoot, and you've established this body of work you know, outside of this app, and you're going to just start sharing it differently, maybe. But you know, in all of photography, it's really important that that's my mic, um, that you have this unique point of view and that's what sets you apart from everyone else. And in the way it sets you apart in the real world, that's what's going to set you apart on the app. Um, beyond just using it to share 
you know, the most incredible epic photos that you take, it's important to really share what you see as well because this is, in its essence, a social media app. So people are interested not only in the work that you're creating, but the person behind the image and a little bit about yourself. Um, so this is our friend Forrest Mankins, and I think he does a really good job of this because he shares these really epic, beautiful landscape and adventure shots, but he also takes time to show the kind of in-between moments in his life. And he has a whole series of these kind of peppered throughout his work. So his followers will look forward to seeing, you know, kind of where he is each day and what goes into making these great images that you'll see in his portfolio. <clears throat> and that really helps supplement his story and his personal brand, which on our next point, you have to kind of think of yourself as a brand and sell yourself. So we picked Lauren Lemon for this. We think she's a really great example. Her name's Lauren Randolph. She's a photographer in LA, um, and she's kind of branded herself Lauren Lemon with this use of yellow and these bright pops of color. So, you know, it's not all yellow work, but Clients can look at her portfolio and meet her online portfolio on Instagram and immediately see, you know, the kind of work she creates and what they can expect. And this is really effective in, in creating a brand for yourself, having this recognizable work. Yeah. Christian Watson, another great example of this. It's, you know, very consistent. I can spend five seconds on his profile and get a really clear idea of what his brand is, what he's trying to say, what is his point of view. And from a client perspective, you know, maybe a month later after seeing that, they're going to need someone to shoot the gloom and doom of the Pacific Northwest, and they will remember immediately, oh, that guy was great at it. You know, he had a, a huge body of work. Um, you know, and it's really important to tell a story. And like with Forrest, you know, showing this more complete picture, I think it's really important that you include kind of your own narrative and why you create the work that you do and who you are within your social media presence. It's like so, kind of an overarching story yeah. that comes, you know, peppered throughout the work. For us, it's you know just our, our travels and being on the road, but that can be really anything. It can be as simple as my story is I'm a photographer that's living and working in New York City, you know, and you can just kind of share bits and pieces of your life. One of my favorite examples of this is Andrew Knapp. I'm not sure if you guys know him, but he's really well known for his photos of his dog, Momo. So he travels um, extensively in a Volkswagen van with Momo, and he takes photos of Momo in all the places he goes. <coughs> so it might be hard to see here, but Momo is hidden in all of these images. We're gonna, um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is really effective because, first of all, it forces the viewer to really look at an image and try you know, every aspect of it and really really study it. And spend it a lot of time yeah. on the photo. To, so, so he, they spend all this time on this photo that he takes, and Momo is there, but it also creates this really cool interactive experience within the image. So instead of just looking through and admiring it, you know, I have to, I have to look at it, I have to think about it, and, and this is an incredible engagement. So people are tagging their friends, they're telling Andrew when they found Momo, and they really look forward to seeing this recreated. And it's never the same, you know, the, the consistency is in that Momo is somewhere in there, but it's always different. Um, and consistency is important. Consistency <laughs> is key. So beyond um, you know, finding what you're good at, really challenge yourself to take that one thing that you might be the best at and become the best at it. You know, Really push yourself. So this is Emily Blinko, and she shoots a ton of work. She's really prolific, really versatile, but she's become really well known for these arrangements, which are just you know, these beautiful little moments that she captures with things she finds. From a branded perspective, as a client, I can look at this and really easily imagine my product, you know, shot in this way. But it's nice because she's shooting it, you know, just for fun, just to share. Um, and we have something similar that we haven't been doing as much lately, but when we first started traveling, um, we were doing a lot of stuff of the two of us together. Um, and that was really fun for us because it got to sh we got to, you know, show the people behind the image who was taking these photos and share a little bit about ourselves. <laughs> um, and, you know, there was a lot of humor in it and it was fun. And, and we know these aren't the strongest photos, but they, they were fun to create. It motivated us to create them and yeah. it gave our viewers something to look forward to um, and something for us to work on. And this, you know, created all this engagement and people were tagging their friends saying, oh, look at these girls, look what they're doing, or look how stupid they look, or this is fun, I want to be where they are. You're the one on the left. Yeah, <laughs> you're the one on the right. Um, and this, you know, spread, and it had people actually recreating these images. So people really attached themselves to, to this image of us and this composition and, and really enjoyed what we were putting together, so much so that they interacted with us in the same way that you would interact with, you know, Andrew's photos, this really cool you know, bridging the gap between these accounts and, and getting to see the community out there. From a, from a business perspective, <laughs> this works really well because instead of 
just using your voice to spread your message, now you have all of these people that are kind of spreading your message as well. So each time that um, your photo gets shared or recreated or referenced by someone else, you're gaining that many more followers. Kind of leeching off of other people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so captions. I think this is a really heavily underutilized portion of the app. You know, you have this power to share the images and and that's great, but you really have this chance to supplement them with a lot of, you know, you can do this in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, expand on your intentions and, and talk more about your work. And there's so many ways you can do this. Um, we've talked about this before already, but telling a story is really important and integral, you know, to having a success in the app. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with Humans of New York. Um, if you're not, it's this account, it's this man who takes photos of people in New York and then tells their story, which, you know, this photo is fine. Um, I think he might be a cab driver based on what I'm seeing, but what's different in this account is that he goes really in depth with interviewing these subjects. So, you know, you're really connected to the image and you're connected to what you're seeing and it brings you this whole other level um, to what you're seeing um, on the app. Uh, it's also good to get a little bit personal. I think it's, you know, we like to talk really honestly and candidly about our life on the road. Um, and, you know, this is another one of Emily's arrangements, which if I look at it, I think, okay, this is beautiful, it's great, but, you know, when I read why she made it and what it meant to her, you know, I'm affected by this image. I have a really strong connection with it, and, and I want to know more about Emily as a person, and I look forward to seeing what she's going to create next. So maybe that's not within your comfort zone. You're not an oversharer, or maybe you take a photo and it doesn't really have a deeper meaning. You don't want to tell a personal story behind it. The space is yours to do really anything that you want with. So a lot of people use it as a way to just, you know, share a technical secret. Our friend Chris Burkhardt is a great example of this. Often in the captions, he will get into what he did from a technical standpoint and talk about the techniques that he's created. Um, your followers will look forward to that as well. They're trusting you as a photographer to kind of share your point of view. <coughs> um, seeking input. I think it's really, you know, it's a great a way for you to reach out directly to people and ask for an opinion, you know, or critique on your work. So this is Sam Larson. Um, he's an amazing illustrator. And here he asks his audience, you know, should I change this at all? Should I add some shading? And, you know, if someone asks you a question in the real world, you don't just turn around and walk away. You know, you're probably going to engage with them. So this is a great way to, you know, interact with your audience. Yeah, and, he'll yeah. have 336 comments here when, you know, before he might have just had a few of people saying, love this one. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Now, community. Community is key on this app. So it's not so much just a photo sharing platform, you know, it's social media and you need to be social with it. You have this opportunity to not just share your own work and your own story, but, you know, find these people and their work and their stories all over the world. Um, and this is how you're going to get the most out of this app. You know, it's one of those things where you really get what you put into it, you know? Yeah, you have to remember that there's 7 billion, <laughs> 700, million. 700 million users. If you're just out there existing as an island sharing your work, how is anybody going to find it, you know? You need to kind of reach out and grab people and be reciprocal. So follow people who inspire you. Follow people whose work you're genuinely interested in and interact with them in a meaningful way. Um, and one of the best ways to do this is commenting. Leave meaningful comments. <laughs> um, and this is important because, you know, again, with these 700 million users on there, how are you going to stand out if, they're, if you're talking or interacting with a photographer whose work you really like? You know, share with them, you know, your, your honest opinion in a, in a real way. Or, you know, if you're going to give feedback, make sure it's, you know, it doesn't have to be positive, but it can be constructive. But just don't, don't do the nice, great, pretty, you know. I, we see those and it's fine, but if someone says, oh, I really love this image, it reminds me when I was there last year, or this reminds me of when I grew up, or I love this so much I wish I could be there with you guys. You know, just a couple extra seconds and a little bit of effort, that'll draw, you know, someone's eye down to your profile, and they'll probably take a look at you and see what, you're, see what kind of work you're creating. Asking questions just kind of feeds into that point, you know? Mm -hmm. Ask questions, engage in conversation. Yeah, you it's know. It's a two-way street. There are people that we know, whether they have 500 followers or 5 million, they're going to take the time to look through those comments. And, and if you're asking questions and they want to help or they want to, they'll answer you. It's the same thing. You're not going to ignore these questions that are being asked. Um, 
my favorite part about the app is the kind of opportunity that it affords you to collaborate with other people. So we're going to take a look at my favorite collaboration. Um, people versus Places, it's our friends Stephanie and Tim, and they're shooting um, on film double exposure. So Stephanie's shooting portraits, and Tim's shooting landscapes, and they, are, she, they mail the roll of film back and forth to each other and share these photos on social media. And you can see they create these beautiful kind of surreal images, always with a person and a place. And it's a really, really cool collaboration that exists you know, across the country. Um, they've met in the real world and you know, had an art show of their images. So that's a beautiful example of a collaboration that can exist because of the power of the internet. <laughs> Um, and maybe you're not quite ready to participate directly with a user. Maybe you don't know and that, that's scary to you. You can actually participate within the app of Instagram. So one of my favorite examples of this, and it's a really good creative challenge, is Instagram holds a week, weekly hashtag project. You can see here, this is one for natural beauty. So this is a pretty broad theme. Um, and it's not limited to just photographers. You know, Anyone on the app can, can take a shot at it. But it's really great because it challenges you every week. It's on your own. You don't have to collaborate with anyone. But it also gets, you know, you get to see all this other work from other people taking on this same challenge. So by participating in this, you're creating new work, you're sharing it on the app, and you're getting it seen by all these other people that are going to want to see what else is being created from the same challenge. So, And then if you're lucky, <laughs> you will be selected by Instagram, and they will share the photo. They usually choose about five of their favorites and share them with their audience of 223 million people. 223 million people. <laughs> you know, so that's an incredible way to have your work seen by the masses. Um, that will, you know, guarantee you a, a boost in your following. And also, these projects are fun. This is a really broad example of a theme, but sometimes they're more specific. Um, you know, they focus on things that you can interpret in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So no matter what your style is, you can kind of find a way to work within it. And that's, again, a great way to see people that are shooting work that you're really interested in, because maybe you'll really enjoy someone's interpretation of the project. Um, and if you do feel like you're ready to meet people in real life, there are tons of ways you can do this, um, especially in a city like New York, but also smaller cities, too. Um, Insta-meets are a great way to meet in the real world. They're safe, and they're fun, and you have people from, you know, super amateur, just getting started with mobile photography to some of the larger photographers on the app. You know, we have a lot of people participate in these things. So almost every city holds them. Um, this is a photo from Instameet Vancouver. So everyone kind of meets in the same place. And they go on a photo walk together. Um, and everyone shoots different stuff. So you get to see all these different styles of photography and meet all these different people. And you get to meet them in the real world, which you then pull that relationship back into the app. Um, so we want to talk about hashtags, because I think this is a heavily understood um, or misunderstood <laughs> uh, part of the app. And uh, I think our biggest um, pet peeve is when people spray and pray with hashtags. So I've seen it before. You're allowed 30 in your caption and then 30 in a comment, and it's just like too crazy. Um, hashtag good, photo, hashtag, hashtag photo. Like we know it's a photo. We don't need to get into that, you know? Um, it's important to be really specific. Um, so here is our friend Sam Larson again. And you can't see the photo, but it was of a caribou in Alaska. Um, and we know that because he's hashtagged it so nicely and specifically for us. Um, and you know, do you want, if, you're, if someone is looking at the caribou hashtag, the Denali National Park hashtag, it's likely they're very interested in these places and these subjects. So they're way more likely to interact with your image than if you just said photo, good, happy. You know, like, and you can easily see which hashtags you should be using by clicking on them and being like, okay, do I want to be in this group of people? Um, so I think it's really important to be specific. Um, another great way is um, engaging with different publications and collectives. So National Geographic is a great example. They have the hashtag your shot photographer, and you can. <coughs> It's, it's almost like a submission call. So you can use that hashtag to submit your work for consideration to be posted on their Instagram of almost 600,000 people. Um, again, you can see who else has been using that hashtag and find other users to interact with. Um, and a lot of people will start following you as well, because a lot of people browse habitually these hashtags and just kind of check out what's out there. Um, that's one example. There's tons of them. Every publication that you're interested in will have one. Yeah, and just try to be intentional with who you're participating with. Make sure your work fits into what they're doing. Um, and pitfalls and drawbacks. So 
obviously it's not all perfect. You're putting your work out there into the world and there are all sorts of people there. And, and this doesn't necessarily, you know, even if you don't build a huge following um, or you do achieve this huge following, these pitfalls and drawbacks can fall under this umbrella no matter what. Um, we really felt the effects of these, especially when our following grew. Um, and number one was <laughs> getting creative stage fright and also equating likes with quality, which you really cannot do. So we're gonna start with getting the creative stage fright. Um. Um, so this will happen to everyone. You kind of start to figure out really quickly what works. And when I say works, I mean it gets a lot of likes and comments, you know? And then you realize, oh, that's what people like, that's what I'll do. And in doing that, you kind of completely forget why you started taking photos in the first place, you know? It's not to get the most likes, you know? You do it because you want to. Um, and this next example here is just like, this doesn't mean anything to you, but it means a lot to me because I know that this is nine photos that are shown consecutively, but this was actually six months of time that passed in between. So in those six months, we became very paralyzed with, oh, I don't know if people are gonna like this photo. What if they unfollow us? Yeah. Uh, we don't wanna lose <laughs> any followers. Let's not put up anything offensive. Like, only the stuff that people will really like. Um, and it really limits your growth because you go out and instead of just shooting what you used to shoot and the things that you love seeing, you're thinking about all of these other people and trying yeah. to tailor things to their And in that you're gonna forget your voice, which you know, we say this at the beginning, it's so important that you hone in on who you are as a photographer, outside the app, in the real world especially, but also on the app. Um, and as soon as you start shooting for other people, you're gonna just get jumbled up and lose everything. And so my, f <laughs> um, you're gonna end up sanitizing your no. work. And my, f no, we need the slide <laughs> for this one. What did we do last time? Did we just press play again? Yeah. Okay, all right, so. Um, <laughs> so in our earlier, <laughs> work, uh, before we had a lot of followers, we were really silly and kind of crass on the app. And, um, but we had fun with it, which was the most important thing. And you can see here, this is really early on in our trip. We didn't have a lot of followers, but 4,000 people you know, felt compelled to like this image. I think it and, had 200 comments on it. Yeah, and it had hundreds of comments. Then as our following grew, we became really nervous about posting anything that would offend anybody or you know, be controversial in any way. So we really sanitized our work down and started shooting rainbows and sunsets and stuff that was <laughs> safe. Um, but you can see it had a really adverse effect. This is you know, almost a year later, we should be growing, really. And this has half as many likes as a photo that was taken a year previous. And so we engaged with it. There yeah, were no comments. There's 10 comments or something. You know, Great rainbow. <laughs> like, nice. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and it felt really impersonal. It made us feel like we were really losing our connection with the people in our community and, and the followers we had gained. Yeah, so you have to be really careful. As, and you know, whether you get 100,000 followers or 500 followers, as soon as you feel that people that you don't know are starting to pay attention to your work, there is an urge to kind of step back and you know, think about it a little too much. Mm -hmm. All right, so this brings us to likes and quality. This is really difficult to really get to. When you're feeling it, it feels very real. And especially when you start sharing your work on Instagram, it's easy to be like, okay, well, this photo didn't do as well. It must not be as good. Um, that could not be further from the truth. You need to really remove that you know, sense of worth from the amount of likes. Um, you have to keep in mind that everyone has different, did we lose this? Oh, no. Everyone has different tastes. So you know, consider the viewer, consider your audience. You know, did you get positive feedback from a photographer you really respected? That's way more important than getting a like from someone who doesn't care, you know? Um, consider the subject matter. So was this, was this image, oh, it's not again. How about now, oh, okay. So consider the subject matter. Um, this is a good example because this is Andrew Knapp again, a really easy photo, you know, Momo's in the center, people love it's interacting cute. with the dog. Yeah, <laughs> this one I think is a, an absolutely beautiful portrait of his dad. It tells a story, it's gorgeously composed, it's gorgeously lit. A third of as many people liked this. Now Andrew could have really easily looked at that and said, I should never shoot another portrait again, I'm terrible at it. <laughs> I'm hoping he didn't do that, you know? You have to kind of keep in mind, in the real world, if you're walking down the street, you're gonna probably tell a dog that he's a good boy, but you're not gonna compliment a strange man. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it feels a lot safer for someone to hit the like button on this than that. 
That doesn't mean they're not seeing it, though, and that doesn't mean that they don't think that it's a beautiful photo. They just might not feel comfortable interacting with it. Um, and this is something you're going to find will happen whether you have five followers or 500 or five million. Um, people seem to find it really easy on the internet to say whatever they want. Um, so these are some comments we got, you know, from people that obviously, I don't care about this. This guy's actually not a photographer. I don't care about his work. I don't care about his opinion. But he felt the need to tell us that we sucked and that we didn't know how to dress, which I don't know if you guys caught the talk yesterday. Someone said we were quite fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> So if you do get this kind, kind of treatment, I'm not going to focus too long on this, but just block, block out the haters and, yeah. and move on. Um, and focus on the constructive criticism. So again, if someone that you, you know, someone's work that you respect or someone you trust tells you something about your image, you know, really listen to it and take that feedback and, and work it into your process. But you know, don't, don't think about, well, his name used to be Lil T-Swag, but <laughs> the haters. <laughs> um, so. You know, creating branded content. I don't think you want to take this one. Sure, yeah. If, um, you know, once you start develop, to develop a little bit of a presence on the app, you have this trusted perspective. So your followers are following you because they like your point of view and because they trust you. And brands love to capitalize on that. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you have, you know, a thousand followers or a million followers. There is a value in that story that you've been sharing and the work that you've been creating. And so, um, one way that you can monetize on that value is by partnering with like-minded brands. Um, one of the first jobs that we did um, as branded content, if you're unfamiliar with the term branded content, I'm just going to get into it quickly because it's very new territory for a lot of people. So essentially, a brand or company will pay you to post photos on your Instagram on their behalf. So this is a partnership we did with HTC, which is a um, mobile phone company. And they had a brand new phone with a really great camera on it. So they hired us to shoot a series of images. You can just kind of scroll okay. through them. Um, a series of images and then talk about the camera in the captions and kind of share with our followers you know, who trust us as photographers you know, things that we like about this camera and, and the phone. Um, keep going. Um, so there's a couple of guidelines to doing things like this. Um, you know, you don't want to just answer the first branded offer that you get and start, you know, you know the scene from Wayne's World where they sell out. <laughs> you don't want it to be like that. Um, so, you know, most importantly, it has to make sense with what you do. Align with brands that, you know, you, you get along with. Um, be selective. Um, so, for example, we shoot a lot of travel imagery. So it made sense for us to partner with different tourism boards, travel agencies. This, for example, is work that we did on, cons on assignment for um, travel and tourism brands and posted on our feeds promoting their services or their locations. You can see that it blends really seamlessly in with the rest of our work. You can't tell kind of that it's an advertisement. So you're finally getting work, but they don't want, you to, they don't want to pay you. They want to give you trade or exposure. Um, please don't work for free. If we all work for free, no one's going to get paid. Um, and this is important because once you set the precedent that you'll do work for free, no one's going to pay you moving forward. Um, you know, there is a value in what you're creating. And just because you're creating photos on an app does not mean that that's not valuable. In the real world, no one's going to try to, well, they'll try. But you shouldn't be taking these free assignments, you know. We all need to get paid for what we do. And if you start taking them, it really, you know, shallows the pool for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's really tempting in the beginning, you know. If the first time you get an offer, oh, I'd love to give you a, this backpack, if you go out and take some photos of it, sounds great. You have to think about who's getting more from that, you or the person who's getting all of this exposure from your following. Um, you would never go to your mechanic or your hairdresser and say, what if I give you this backpack instead of money? You know. So remember that you're a photographer at the end of the day, and your services are worth money. And staying true to yourself, so creating commercial work from a personal perspective and being subtle in your work. So here is one of my favorite examples of this. This is Laura Pritchett, and one of these is a branded um, post. So it's the shoes for Cole Haan. And really, you can see that the one on the left is a personal post. And you can't really tell which one is being branded. And, and her voice has not changed. And the themes are very, are very familiar. And here again with Andrew Knapp. 
This image right here, the one on the left is just personal, and the one on the right is, is for Starbucks. But this isn't offensive to me, you know? I'm used to seeing Momo interacting with his environment. I'm used to the van. I'm used to these tones. And, and for me, this was just kind of fun to look at. I was like, oh, there he There's is. There's product placement in it, but it like isn't too offensive. It's not hammering you over the head, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just try and be thoughtful in this product placement um, if you get to that point. Don't, don't force it. Do what feels natural. Um, brands, this is like a relatively new world for a lot of people. Um, ad agencies, clients don't fully know how to navigate it yet, and they're going to push for what they're used to getting, which is whatever, whatever they, they want. want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you have to keep in mind that you're posting this on your channel, so you're taking a risk here in tarnishing your own brand, which is valuable as well. You can't just give them whatever they want. You need to kind of come up with a creative solution to satisfy both parties. So this is just a quick video. Quality's not gonna be super great, but a video that we made for LG. Okay. Um, a video that we made for LG, and they really wanted blatant product placement in it, which wasn't something that we felt super comfortable doing, but we came up with a way of showing the phone, showing the interface of the phone in a way that kind of still felt like our own work, you know? It, it blended in with the rest of our stuff. And you have to really advocate for yourself in these situations and, and you know, do what you feel comfortable with. Because at the end of the day, you spent all of this time cultivating this following and kind of gaining the trust of these people. If you just all of a sudden start posting like, <laughs> Hi, I'm eating a Big Mac today. Like all of these really blatant advertisements, you're gonna lose all of that in a heartbeat. And It'll people be gone. see through it immediately. It yeah. won't go over well. You won't be well received, and that trust will be broken. Mm -hmm. um, so, planning for a sustainable future. Um, this is kind of key in what we want to teach. It's, you know, Instagram has been amazing. Social media is amazing, but these platforms are constantly evolving. Um, imagine you'd put all your stock in you're putting your portfolio on MySpace, you know? Um, where would you be today? <laughs> Tom, where are you? <laughs> Tom's actually a travel photographer now, which is kind of funny. Um, is he here? <laughs> <laughs> but keep in mind that these things are, you know, constantly evolving. So don't completely count on this app. And also, if you don't become highly successful by gaining all these followers, that don't feel like that's it for you. It's really about creating a portfolio, trying your best to have your work seen, and staying true to your voice. Um, and you know, and you never know, even you get 500 followers, you don't know who sees your work. So even if it doesn't seem like you've achieved this great number, I, I can guarantee you that if you're thinking intentionally about sharing your work and staying true to your voice and doing all of these things that we talked about, you'll never know who's going to stumble across your, your portfolio. You know, it might lead to a job kind of indirectly. Um, later on down the line, a client will think, oh, I loved that photo that I saw, you know, or or maybe it'll connect you with a person who will connect yeah. you with another person. It, it happens kind of indirectly. It's not going to be like one day you achieve a 1,000 followers on Instagram and you unlock this opportunity <laughs> and a check comes for you in the mail. It's not that simple, but um, the work that you put in is going to pay off in one way or another. Yeah, it really will teach you a lot. It'll challenge you creatively. And then it'll just bring you these wonderful people in this community that you, know, you might not be able to find in your hometown or, or wherever you live. Um, but it is important to have this exit strategy. So we, you know, we love our having this following, and it's helped us in so many ways. But we are constantly thinking of making sure we continue to build our brand and our portfolio outside of this. So in the last year, I'd say 70% of our work was actually fully removed from social media, which I think is a really great balance for us to strike. Um, you know, when people start thinking of you as an influencer, um, and that's equating your worth in your audience and not so much your work. We, we aren't influencers, you know, at the end of the day we're photographers. And the goal is to become a sustaining photographer, a professional photographer. Yeah. So Instagram, want, you want it to be one tool mm -hmm. in the toolbox full of skills that you have, not that is your thing. You're not, you don't want to be a professional Instagrammer, you know? You want to be a photographer who has a great Instagram following or a great presence on Instagram. So there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of take the success that you have on Instagram, or not even the success, but just the work that you're creating on Instagram, and transform it into success in the real world. So this, we're all familiar with this shot on an iPhone campaign, of course. Um, I would say all of these photographers, if 90% were sourced 
you know, from Instagram. They found great work on there. And like what, what photographer doesn't dream of having their, their photograph on a billboard, right? So that's, you know, just from simply sharing their work, sharing what they love. These are people who didn't have a lot of followers, um, but they shot great content and they, they took the time to share it. And look what it led to. We didn't even get a billboard. Didn't get a billboard. <laughs> we were not given. We're a still dreaming of this. <laughs> um, but you know, people that had less following than we did did. It's just it's about the work. Yeah. Um, and this is such a great way of seeing it in the world. And you know, Andrew, my golden boy of this presentation, um, he was able to create three books. He just published a children's book this year. Um, this has been translated to ten languages, and this is you know an amazing. Thing. He took this project that started on Instagram, that lived on Instagram, that he cultivated on Instagram, and all of a sudden, you know, here it is in the real world, and he's doing cross-country book tours. Um, and for us, you know, we mentioned this before, 70% of our work this year has been outside of Instagram. So we use this tool to promote our work and, and get this branded content and these really great opportunities, but really we built this solid portfolio, yeah. and we've now been using this to get these other assignments. See, in this job, you know, well, it... It was removed from Instagram, it came to us from our photo agency. Our Instagram really played a role in it because they're able to look and say, okay, these girls are comfortable shooting work that's viewed on a phone. You know, they have this experience with Instagram, they've been making content that lives on a phone for the last four years. They're going to be comfortable using this product and showcasing it to the best of its abilities, you know? So having that tool in our toolkit really came in handy there. Um, so I guess we want to end it on just use Instagram to benefit you in the many ways it can, but don't count on it entirely. You know, use it to challenge yourself, to build a community, to curate a portfolio, and to to get your name out there. But if you don't don't equate your likes with the quality, and don't equate your success with your followers, um, use it to the best you can, the best of your ability, and really get your work out in other ways. And you're gonna get something out of it, no matter what. Like even if you don't see the the results overnight. Just the intention of creating work and sharing it and actively challenging yourself to create new work and share new work consistently, it's beneficial in so many ways other than just like a tangible financial amount.